Today is the 95th day of Donald Trump's presidency, and since he became the 45th president of the United States, the world has been watching to make sure he keeps his campaign promises. But what do those promises and orders he's made mean for Hampton Roads? Regina Mobley is here with that answer. Regina? Well, David, as the nation and world are assessing the president's first 100 days, tonight a critical look at what has happened in Hampton Roads since Donald Trump moved into the Oval Office. Protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Donald J. Trump, the billionaire developer, stormed into the Oval Office January 20th, creating an unprecedented political tidal wave. We reject the president -elect. On day two, protests that started in Washington went global. Are we fed up with Trump? Yes. On day seven, protesters gathered at the nation's major airports as immigrants were turned away in what critics called a Muslim ban. Across the region, voters have strong opinions about the president. So much anxiety still. I feel like I'm just like oh, waiting for the worst of the worst to happen. Uh, the things that he campaigned on, he's definitely delivering on them. So you got to give him something for that. Then the focus shifted to Hampton Road. A Virginia Beach-based Navy SEAL was killed in a raid in Yemen. A source told ABC News it was clear al-Qaeda knew the Americans were coming. President Trump defended the raid, saying it provided valuable information. Ryan Owen's widow, Karen, was the president's guest at his first address before a joint session of Congress. About a month later, Dr. William Harvey, president of Hampton University, and Eddie Moore, the president of Norfolk State University, were in the Oval Office as President Trump signed an executive order to promote excellence and innovation at the nation's historically black colleges and universities. We are going to have very soon the finest equipment in the world. On day 45, POTUS 45 flew into Newport News shipbuilding to announce a proposed $54 billion increase in military spending. The Marine Corps is still using equipment uh, that was built in the 1970s. But 3rd District Congressman Bobby Scott, whose district includes the shipyard, says not so fast. The problem will be how to pay for it. Um, so I'm all for the increase if it's paid for. I'm not for it if you just add it on to the deficit. On day 59, the Chesapeake Bay, created in part by a meteor, took another hit when the president's proposed 2018 budget called for stripping $73 million from a program to continue efforts to clean the bay. Congressman Scott Taylor of Virginia's 2nd District has stood by President Trump on defense spending, but he draws the line on plans that could cripple efforts to save the bay. I personally have put in uh, a request for appropriations to keep that funding the same. Halfway into the 100 days, the Hampton Roads region started to notice an uptick in several economic indicators. According to to the ODU Center for Economics, Analysis and Policy. For the first time since January of 2007, unemployment is down and the labor force is up. While we cannot say the president directly contributed to the positive economic news, it was welcomed on the streets of Hampton Roads. Opinions are mixed on President Trump at 100 days. I love the president. I love Donald Trump. A big fat F. Why? Totally disappointed. He's a liar. He has misguided the American public. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Well, we want to hear what you have to say. Head to our Facebook page. We are using the hashtag Trump at 100 to track what you have to say about the president's first 100 days in office. In the studio, Regina Mobley, 13 News Now.